The day of supercars being difficult to drive, temperamental thoroughbreds has long since passed. But the truth is, in the last five years, exotic coupes have gotten even easier to live with while still expanding their performance capabilities. The Audi R8, of course, has been the poster child for the daily drivable supercar. Now in its second generation with a massive 610 horsepower engine, none of that has changed. In fact, it may be the friendliest super sports car in the world. How does it look? Audis in general, and R8s in particular, tend to appear in cool, neutral colors like blue, silver, or black. That's probably why I like this one in dynamite red. The short nose and muscular shape works really well in this color, especially with the framing of those black carbon fiber accents. Oh, and the 20 inch wheels look phenomenal at each corner too. How's the storage? Listen, anytime you put a V10 engine where the trunk is supposed to go, I'm not gonna complain about storage too much. Up front, there's enough room for a small bag or you can overnight for a couple of people, which is pretty much exactly how it should be for the supercar segment. This is an environment designed for driving, not stowing soda and snacks. Yes, there's a place to put your laptop bag behind the seats and a half-hearted set of cup holders if you really must drink. But the R8 would prefer you keep your hands on the elegant steering wheel. Thanks. Is it roomy? Ah, uh, nope. Okay, okay. I can get my stupid big body behind the wheel well enough to drive the hell out of this thing, but it's far from roomy. Suffice it to say that most average sized drivers will be thrilled to sit here, and tall folks like me won't think twice about the paucity of headroom. How does the interior feel? So I tend to think of the R8 cabin as kind of the pinnacle of Audi interior design. It's technical, it's purposeful, and it's just luxurious enough to justify the price tag. But the most impressive part has gotta be the multifunction steering wheel, which allows me to do everything I need to do to pilot the car without taking my hands off shift, change the drive mode, activate the race mode, change the active exhaust, and even start and stop the engine. Is it well equipped? Even the barest bones R8 gets a lot of equipment, and this plus car gets even more. Ceramic brakes come baked into this package, which is no small addition for a car with a top speed in excess of 200 miles per hour. Cosmetically, there are LED lights all around and carbon fiber slathered on the exterior from tip to tail, including the dramatic rear wing and the signature side blades. How's the infotainment system? Audi's virtual cockpit interface is spectacular, even on the plain old A4. Here in the R8, it really makes sense though. It allows the driver to keep his eyes up and his head in the game. Smooth, fast responding graphics work well if you need to follow Navi directions at triple digits. Not that I do that. Is it a good daily driver? So the kind of running joke around the office has been that the R8 has turned into the Audi TT V10. And while we say that in a lighthearted fashion, what we really mean by it is that when you're driving the car on a normal level in the comfort mode, not shifting with the paddle shifters, it feels so easy to drive. So maneuverable, light around town, easy in a parking lot, and just really, you know, like a normal car that it, it hardly feels like you've got a supercar around you. And I think that, again, with that sort of daily drivable nature of the R8, uh, you really do have a supercar that, that you can live with day in and day out if that's what you want. Of course, don't forget that all the power helps to make the car a great daily driver too. You know, we talk about it a lot, but when you're doing something like merging on the highway, having a responsive transmission and 610 horsepower is not a bad thing. 
you're able to get to the spot that you want to get to very, very quickly. Dicing through traffic is easy. The steering weights up really, really nicely at speed, but it feels very direct, so it's not either too busy or uh, overly sort of jerky and, and frenetic when you're on the highway. So yeah, I, I would say that like a large part of the magic of the R8 is that it's such a good daily driver while still having incredibly high limits like a true supercar. Is it fun to drive? Oh. Yeah, it's really fun to drive. <laughs> So the R8 has become more mild mannered when you don't want to push it, that's for sure. The thing is, when you do want to push it, this car is insanely capable. I would argue as capable as it ever has been. Maybe as uh, impressively fast and good handling as any Audi or Volkswagen group, group product underneath the Lamborghini brand. In fact, I, you know, I've driven uh, Gallardo's in the past, I've driven the current Huracan, and those cars are razor sharp and do feel different than this uh, R8 does. But you know, you've gotta put it right up in the league with other like very fast mid-engine supercars that it competes with. Now, the R8 sounds really, really good. The V10 is just phenomenal. When you open up the exhaust valves, uh, you can tell that you've got something truly special behind you. The steering is quick, but again, it's well-weighted, so you don't feel like it's uh, sort of pulling you too quickly from one side to the other. But on a good road, you can do change of directions very quickly and stably with a suspension that is really, really firm and a body structure that's just completely unflappable. What I really like about the car in the fun to drive nature though is that it does offer a lot of feedback. Now, it's not Ferrari level of feedback and it's maybe not even 911 level of feedback, but I can feel a lot of uh, sort of the grip story that's happening from the tires through the wheel. Uh, and there's also a lot of information on the road that I'm getting through the floorboards of my feet and the seat of my pants, which is always a really good thing when you're talking about a car that's this quick. Now, I guess the downside, if you want to call it that, is that this R8 is definitely less edgy all the time than the old car was. So, whereas this one, you can relax, uh, you can really make it a good GT car, or like I said, you can do anything in it. Um, it doesn't feel quite as dangerous and sexy and exotic, I guess, uh, at every given moment, uh, like the old car was. Still, the levels of grip and thrust in this car are absolutely phenomenal. And it's those characteristics that make the R8 feel truly special when you decide to turn up the wick. How's the fuel economy? I'm told that you can get up to 22 miles per gallon on the highway, but unless you're driving the car in a fashion counter to the spirit in which it was designed, you shouldn't really care. Let me put it another way. The gas tank holds over 19 gallons, so you'll have plenty of time to play between fill-ups. How much is it? more than my first house, though I do live in Southeast Michigan. While the R8 Coupe now bottoms out at about $163,000, our Plus model has a base price of $189,900. On top of that is a rather light options package by Supercar Standards. $5,000 for the diamond stitch leather, $19,000 for the B&O sound system, fifteen dollars for the 20 inch wheels, etc. The total comes to over $202,000 well in line with the pricing for Porsche's Turbo S model. What are the negatives? The old rule of thumb says that your car can cost about a quarter to a fifth of your yearly income. If that's the case, you need to at least be a B actor in Hollywood or a very good plastic surgeon before you can afford this thing. But the real negatives come in the form of the Porsche 911 Turbo or the McLaren 570S. It's not that the R8 can't run with that competition, but it does often offer up a milder, less intense experience. Who should buy it? The other side of that less intense coin is that the R8 offers a driving experience that's great for a really broad number of people. The fact that it can go from bleeding edge performance to really laid back grand touring means that you're a lot more likely to want to pull it out of the garage. And it's a design icon, so anybody who's looking for the ultimate rolling styling statement should look no further. Hey guys, thanks for watching our Audi R8 Why Buy video. If you like what you've seen, please leave a comment. Uh, tell us what you think. You can also subscribe to our channel. You can find us on Facebook and on Twitter. And of course, you can find us at MotorOne.com.